And for the last three days, God has been talking to me, and I've been writing it down. So today I'm going to read to you what God has been speaking to me. The day of the Lord, the day of the Lord has come. Come, my people, to Mark Carmel to see my glory, says the Lord of hosts. My little children, why have you trembled and feared at the evil that you are seeing in the earth? I am not moved or shaken at the roaring of the wicked, for their very breath I hold in my hand. I have delayed in answering the intercession of the righteous for time to expose the false prophets. I will not be manipulated by men who put words in my mouth that I have not said. Do not be moved by the damage that the delay of me coming has caused. I can, I will repair, and I will restore what the enemy has taken. This is the Elijah season. What you are seeing now is the spirit of Jezebel trying to cut the head off of John the Baptist. Just as I allowed Herod to behead James but not Peter, so now I won't allow the spirit of Jezebel to behead the prophetic voice that I have raised up in this hour, says the Lord. This time I am going to reverse in the earth what happened to John the Baptist, who was the Elijah of his day. This time, I'm going to cut off the voice of Jezebel. I have had much preparation to accomplish for this final harvest in the earth. Many have thought I was not involved in the affairs of men the last two years that I had stayed my distance because I did not hear the prayers of my people. But know this, I have been setting the stage for the greatest display of the sovereignty of my power that mankind has ever and will ever witness, saith the Lord. This has been a time of separating the goats from the sheep, for there are many who call themselves Christians, but they are not. They, by their actions, have declared, we will serve the Lord, but by our rules, not by His. They have rewrote my Bible, they have changed my laws, and they have changed my commandments, and have said, if you want me, it'll be on my way and not yours. But they are arrogant and foolish to think that my words and my commandments can be changed by mere mortal men. It is not the wicked who have weakened the church in this hour, but it is the counterfeit Christians who have been a cancer in my body that have taken the very virtue out of my house. But because sentence was not executed speedily, they thought that I had overlooked or that I had accepted their ways. This time, saith the Lord, I'm going to judge the lukewarm just like I judge the wicked. There will be no separation. Watch now as I judge leaders who did not guard my sheepfold. Samson will grind at the wheel blind. Eli will fall off of his throne. And Saul will die at the hands of the enemy after I have finished cleansing my house and separating the sheep from the goats, I'm going to turn my sheep into lions that will be loosed in the earth for this hour. For this next season will require demons to become terrified of the church, the majesty of my glory that is beginning to be released in this hour, saith the Lord, is not entertainment, it is not the exaltation of the gifts of men, but it is the divine holy presence 
presence of the Lord God Almighty. In the earth, hallelujah, will be fulfilled. The next two sovereign events that are going to occur will be the fulfillment of prophecy that the wealth of the sinner will be given to the righteous. There has been a Nabal spirit that has been withholding from the tabernacle of David that I am raising up in this hour, saith the Lord. I am going to force the wicked to release their wealth to my people because it's going to require much wealth to finance what I'm going to do in this time. You will know that wealth is beginning to change hands when you see me shake financial centers in Europe, in New York City, and the other continents around the world, and it will declare that the transfer of wealth has begun. I will also bless my people for their many years of faithfulness. I'm going to bless you, my children, in such a way that there will be no way to contain the abundance. The words that you have declared, surely my cup runneth over, will no longer be a decoration of faith, but it will be the very experience, saith God, that I am opening the windows of heaven upon the children of the Lord, saith God. Because the enemy has tried to destroy and alienate for every believer that has walked in faith, I am now going to heal, says the Lord of hosts. I'm also going to usher in and release in the church. And it will begin in the year 2022 in the fall. The church is now going to experience signs, wonders, and creative miracles, saith God. For it is my will that my body be completely healthy and whole to accomplish my sovereign will in the earth. For the earth has looked at the church and said, you say one thing, but yet your power is deficient. And we watch, but nobody is really set free. But this time, saith God, I will do miracles in such a way that no one will be able to say it was sleight of hand or manipulation or a trick. For arms will go out, saith God, where there was no arms. I will cause eyes to grow in sockets where there are no eyes, saith God. I am also coming after the spirit of autism that hell put upon the children of the godly men and women in this hour. And I am going to break that demon, says the Lord, because it is not of me. And then the children of the Lord that have not communicated were branded not strong mentally there will be a power of God hit them and as Saul prophesied and as Samuel prophesied so will your children prophesy did I not declare it saith the Lord that on the day of Pentecost this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy saith the Lord for there is much that is yet to be fulfilled that I have declared in my word and it has been so long coming that my children have begun to wonder is it just a fable is it just a good teaching but know this I don't work I don't move just to see myself move I don't talk just to hear myself talk but I will perform my word not one jot not one one tittle shall fall by the wayside. Nations that are called superpowers in the earth are not superpowers, for they have no power. For the power of a nation is not its army, but it's the God that rules over them. And the gods that rule over China. And the non-gods that rule over Russia. 
and the millions of gods that rule over India will not keep me out, saith the Lord, when I get ready to loose my sovereignty upon those nations. Rulers will stand and say, no, no, no. But heaven will declare and rejoice, yes, yes, yes. You will remember when I do this, I'm now going to send a strong spirit of confusion to politicians and the wicked who have seized authority illegally over the nations. My book is a legal book. It is based on laws and the court of heaven. Therefore, I do not recognize, saith God, those that stand in places of leadership but seized it illegally. You will know that I am fulfilling this when you watch liberals and evil politicians and even the media online with live television turn on each other and begin to destroy each other, saith the Lord. I will cause them to uncover their underbellies. I will make them tell the lies that they have told and declare it was not true. My wrath has been stored up for this time, and I'm now going to release it, says the Lord of hosts. Just as there was a wailing in Egypt when I destroyed the firstborn, so shall there now be a wailing come up out of the earth for those who have tried to destroy my people. For they have sat behind closed doors and said, there is no God. We are God. And they have said, there is nothing that can stop us from doing what we want to do. So they killed your children. They have stolen your inheritance. They have robbed the widows. And they have caused the fatherless to be forsaken. As I caused Pharaoh, who was the king of kings at that time in the earth, bow down and wail over the loss of his own firstborn son. I am going to hit the weakness of those men and those women and I am going to begin to strip them of that which has been so important to them. And when I do, all of their attention will be on what they are losing. And they will no longer pay attention to what I am doing in the earth. For those, hallelujah, now the final battle for the church is going to unfold in the earth. This battle isn't going to be fought in natural realms. This is not a battle of buildings. This is not a battle of money. This is not a battle of talent. This is not a battle of who's who. This is not a battle about who has the greatest airtime or who has written the latest book. This battle is going to be fought, not in the natural realm, but in the domain of of the heavenlies. This is not a battle, hallelujah. It is not the final battle, saith the Lord, that's going to occur between good and evil in the earth. But this is the last battle for the church. Before I remove her from the earth and bring my beloved whom I have longed for home to be with me, saith the Lord. The time is short. The time is short. The time is short. Look, saith God, look at thy garments. Are they clean, saith the Lord, regardless of the men that have said you can go to heaven and live in sin? Not so, for I am a holy God. I do not know sin. I've never bowed down to sin. There has never been sin in my house, and I will not allow sin to come into my throne room, saith the Lord. So if there is sin, Sin in thy life, saith God, get it out, for the days of repentance are coming to an end. For those that I have moved on, rebuked, and caused to be convicted. 
I have delayed bringing home my people. You call it the rapture. I call it homecoming. I have not brought my saints home because I said, though you go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, when you come back, You will bring your sheaves with you. So know this, saith God. This is the time that I'm giving sheaves to the house of God. And when you come home, saith God, you're not coming home empty-handed. You say, but Father, what are the sheep? The sheep are your children. The sheep are your family. The sheep are the fruit of thy womb. As you have wept over those that you have loved, You've watched hell afflict them, bind them, cause them to become addicted until you've wondered, Lord, is there any hope? This is the day of hope, saith God. This battle, saith God, is not a normal battle. This battle, saith the Lord, is really about the church stepping on the neck of the enemy. I make covenant with you this day, saith God. You will not bleed in this battle. You will not be cut in this battle, and you will not be wounded in this battle, saith the Lord. And yet those that are in this battle, saith God, are covered with scars, but they're healed from other seasons and other time, saith the Lord. When you cross into heaven, saith God, Your scars will be the medals that soldiers have wore when they have come out of battle victorious. They in heaven will come and say, what is this scar? And you will say, oh, this is when we had this victory, and this is what God did. You have thought, says the Lord, that you would want to speak to the apostles And to the prophets of the Old Testament. For them to tell you firsthand the stories that you have read about. But I tell you, saith God, what you're getting ready to see. What you're getting ready to experience. Has caused the great cloud of witnesses to stand to their feet. And they are watching. Hallelujah. As you will walk in great victory and power. And when you cross over, they will say, tell us what it was like to be in that final movement. What was it like to see the glory of the latter house and the former house? What was it like not just for the former reign, but the former reign and the latter reign to fill the heavens and to wash the earth? And you will say, oh, it was glorious and joy unspeakable and full of glory, says the Lord. The battlefield that the church is stepping on to will become the harvest field after it was the battlefield. Heaven has already decided the outcome of this battle. When this battle is over, the devil will stand embarrassed and demons 
will stand confused and say, what do we do now? I am now going to fulfill my word that I declared in Amos. The plowman is going to overtake the reaper because of the magnitude of the harvest that is coming into the house of the Lord. This will happen because I am shortening the laws of, of nature. I am going to abbreviate the time between planting and reaping, says the Lord. In the past, the waiting of harvest has made many of my servants weary. But this time, with great joy, shall they bring in the harvest. But to the churches that have created a famine in my house for the word of God so they could have temporary success and growth, know this, I am now going to send a famine of people to your houses and they will become empty tombs. And as they leave thy house, they will know that these people are not coming back, but they are finding houses where they can feast on the presence and the word of the Lord. I have said that I am getting ready to send the death angel into the earth. I am now looking at that angel, saith the Lord, and I'm getting ready to say, go and take the sword in thy hand. When the death angel comes to the earth, and know this, saith God, there are many who will challenge the word that I have released to my servant today and said, it is not the word of the Lord. Watch me, saith God, for I am going to fulfill this word. For in my mercy I have allowed men and women of the past to challenge the prophetic word of the Lord. Now, saith God, I am drawing a line. You will not challenge the word of the Lord because if you do, saith God, the judgment that is in this book is going to come upon thee. The death angel that will leave heaven, saith the Lord, is headed for the house of the Lord. For I declare judgment begins in the house of God. You are going to see platforms where there are musicians and singers that have practiced sin, know they are unclean, yet have no reverence for my presence, and think, I will be as others like Samson, and I will walk onto the house and the presence of God. But when they stand on the platform, they will fall dead as Ananias and Sapphira did, because this is not just another move. It's not a temporary display of my glory, but I am setting the stage for this is saying God, the final move of the Lord. When the angel is finished with the church and there will be men that the world has looked at and said they were fathers, but they were not. They were wolves in sheep's clothing. And as I begin to bring my judgment, I am going to uncover that which has been hid for decades. There are even men who are dead in the ground now, but lie with great reputation. I'm going to change that and uncover who they were when they were on the earth. Do you not know, saith God, that I said my house shall be called a house of prayer and it will not be a den of thieves. In this hour, saith God, this judgment that's going to begin to take place will finish at the end of 2022 and then the angel of death will be released to the nations and they will begin to walk into government houses. They will begin to walk 
into secret places. They will begin to walk into the dens of demons. And the hand of God will be released, saith the Lord. For this is my hour. This is my earth. You are my people. And I will no longer bow down to sin in the earth. I'm going to raise up even sinners who will stand in reverence for me, saith God. For I am a sacred God. I am a holy God. I am a righteous God, saith the Lord. And I have been maligned, pushed aside, spit on, and put down. But in this hour, saith the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is rising to his feet and shaking himself. Shout, saith God, for my word will come back fulfilled, saith the Lord. 